Uh, let's try it on our CentOS machine. Let's try it on the CentOS machine. Now the CentOS machine is gonna be a little bit different because this one doesn't have that slash etc slash network slash interfaces file. It still calls it ETH zero, but it doesn't have the slash etc slash network slash interfaces, right? If we try to cat that out, cat out slash etc slash network slash interfaces, you see it's like uh, no such file or directory. This is not a thing that exists in this type of uh, distribution. It's like, okay, so then where is the magical file that I need to deal with? Well, let's first look at the directory because the answer is there's actually multiple files. Okay? There are multiple files that are important when you're working on a CentOS machine. So let's first just look at the directory. All right, so we can look at the directory we're doing an LS, right? And the magic directory that we want to take a look at is inside slash etc. So slash etc slash sysconfig. S-Y-S-C-O-N-F-I-G, so slash etc, slash sysconfig, slash network, dash scripts, okay, so slash etc, slash sysconfig, slash network, dash scripts, I'm going to ls that directory out, let's take a look at it, and you'll see inside this directory, there's actually multiple files in here, whole bunch of files, and the way that this particular networking service works is that it actually has one file for every interface. So you notice there's a bunch of these IFCFG files. There's IFCFG ETH0, IFCFG ETH1, IFCFG ETH or uh, LO for the loopback. Like each interface actually has its own file dedicated to it. Whereas the interfaces file, what we were just doing on Kali, that was one file to manage all of the interfaces. I could just go type them all in the same file. This one, they get their own file. So you gotta be real careful with which interface do you want to reconfigure? Because if you reconfigure the wrong interface, it's like, well, you're messing with the wrong file. We got to pay attention to that. And you might have to switch files. So if we jump back over to our diagram, maybe from a diagram perspective, what we'll take a look at here is, well, we have two interfaces. Maybe I'll have the ETH0 be the one that's kind of connected to the top. And we'll have my ETH1 that's maybe the one connected to the bottom. Now, you know, that, that I just picked that randomly. You know, you could do one on the top, zero on the bottom, whichever. And sometimes for a competition, you'll have to pay attention. Which one do I have to do? It might matter. For our hardware right now, it actually doesn't matter. The, the hardware is not going to care which one we pick. But it could be more restrictive, certainly in the future. Okay, so I'm going to pick ETH0 will be the external and ETH1 will be the internal. And let's just go ahead and follow that. So what this tells me is, let's try to configure the external to be 172.20.my number, which was 118.1. I'll put the router at the dot one number, whereas the Kali machine was at the dot 100 number. Sure, let's give that a try. All right. And so we're going to want to go into that file there on the, on the CentOS machine. And this is another good example of how when we run the nano command on our scent machine, we'll see uh, nano does not come with scent. So we're going to have to use VI. And just like before, this is something that's going to require sudo. So I'll do a sudo VI. And now I'm going to go modify that ifcfg-eth0 file. That's a file I'm going to go edit. So I'm going to say slash etc slash sysconfig slash network dash scripts. And now I want that ifcfg dash eth zero oh boy okay so remembering some of these file paths will be critical on competition day to be able to do this effectively and it's like okay go ahead and type in your password for for the sandbox user it's just password for now it's like okay fine and here's the file all right so the file is there the file should already have stuff inside it if you've got a blank file you type the file path wrong all right there should already be things in this file even though there's no ip address yet the file does have content now, some important things that we have to change out of this file, just like before, they have a line for your boot protocol that you're using here. It, it kind of tells you that right now this is set to be DHCP. So just like when we were doing the interfaces file, well, we don't want DHCP. We, we might have a circumstance where we would, but right now we don't. We want to do a static configuration because there's no DHCP server out there that's going to assign me an IP address automatically. So I'm going to have to delete this. I'm going to have to change the DHCP to not say DHCP. I'm going to change it to static, right? Just like before, it's just we enter the, we enter the information slightly differently. Um, then we're going to go down to the very bottom. And the last item on this is it says on boot equals no. So kind of like with the interfaces file, we said auto and then ETH zero. So when the thing turns on, it turns on automatically. It's like, well, how about let's do the, the same thing with our scent machine so that if I restart the service or set so if I restart the computer, this interface will automatically turn on. So I'll change on boot no to on boot equals yes. OK, 
Okay, and now we have to start adding in some of our own settings. Okay, so our minimum, just like before, is we had to add in an IP address and we had to add in a net mask. All right, so let's go ahead and add those uh, items in. The difference though with this file is that they don't call it address. They actually call it IPADDR and make it all uppercase just like all the rest of them. So I'm gonna say IPADDR and then an equal sign, no spaces. You, you kind of have that habit or that instinct to go and hit a space. Don't put any spaces in this file when you're declaring things. So I've got my IPADDR equals. Now let's have it follow the diagram. And it said over there, we're gonna do a 172.20.118.1. This one was going to be the 172.20.118.1, at least at least from my particular uh, interface. Okay, fine. All right. Now let's also go in and add in that net mask. Net mask equals. And again, this one was still the slash 16. So slash 16 translates to 255.255.0.0. So just like before, we're connecting this device to the 172.20 network. All right, that's really critical to understand. You're connecting to the 172.20 network. I will be device number 118.1. So my scent uh, on, the, on the external side here is gonna be the 118.1, whereas the Cali is the 118.100. They're different devices on the same network. And this is the minimum configuration necessary, at least for now, to get things working. All right, you just have to put in an IP address and a net mask. As you start needing other networking details and the problems become more complex, yeah, we'll go back through and add some of that stuff in later. But at least for now, that's pretty good. Okay, so I can hit my escape and then colon WQ, right? You remember how to use VI? Hit I to go to insert mode and then escape colon WQ to be able to write and quit your changes. Okay, hopefully you open the file with sudo. If you didn't open it with sudo, you'll have to quit out of the file and go back in it and, and use sudo to actually go and make the changes. Uh, it, did my IP address change? Right, if I do an IP space A, did, did it actually change? It's like, no, it has, the, the change has not taken effect yet because I haven't restarted the service. All right, so how do you restart the service when you're on a sent machine? It's like, well, I still have that sudo and then system CTL. I'm still going to do a restart, but this time the name of the service is different. Okay, the service that's actually managing your networking on a sent machine is not networking. It's just network. So a lot of people obviously get those confused. You type in networking, right? If we try networking, it's going to yell at us and say, oh, that's not a service. So if you ever get that message, you know, failed to restart, unit not found, it's like, well, you type the a name of a service that doesn't actually exist. All right, so yeah, the name of the service, of course, on our sent machine, it's just network. So sudo system CTL restart network. Let's give that a try. And it kind of pauses for half a second and then goes back. Let's check our IP space A. And it's like, hey, now I've got an INET address, right? Internet address, IP 172.20.118.1, right? And I've now brought this particular machine online to be consistent with the external side of the networking diagram. Uh, let's do it again for ETH, or ETH, that was for ETH0. Let's do it again for ETH1, okay? I'm going to bring my ETH1 on to the internal side. So let's, let's jump back over to our picture here, all right? So what, what did it want us to do for this internal side? On the internal side, it said, well, let's do this one on a 192.168. So this is a different network. This is not the same network, all right? This one was the 172.20 network. Now I'm going to 192.168. And again, we toss in our number. So 192.168.118.1. And we'll also notice this one is actually a slash 24. It's not a slash 16. So let's see what that translates to as we, as we go about configuring some of this stuff in our sent machine. So I'm gonna have to modify a very similar file, but of course this time don't do the IF, IF, uh, CFG ETH0, we want to do the ETH1 file. So where was it? Do you remember? All right, you can type out your history if you, if you forget. All right, we had that history, sudo vi slash etc slash sysconfig network ifcfg-eth0. Well, we want ETH1. So you can hit a couple up arrows. Maybe I'll just retype it here real quick. sudo vi slash etc slash sysconfig slash network dash scripts ifcfg-eth1. That's the one that we're looking to modify. All right, and so again, when I jump in here, there should be information. It's just like before, I'm gonna have to change the boot protocol. I don't wanna use DHCP, that's not gonna be available on here. I hit I to go to insert mode, deleted that out. We're gonna change that to static. I'll have this one start automatically as well. We'll change the on boot from no to yes. And again, we'll have to declare an IPADDR equals. IP ADDR equals. And what did the diagram say? It said we're going to do now a 192.168, not a 172.20. And then again, we toss in our number of 118. 
and I'm still going to be a number one. All right, so 192.168.118.1, that's what we were configuring this side to be. All right, uh, from here, we're also going to have to declare a net mask. But now, of course, as we saw in the diagram, this one is a slash 24. And the slash 24 translates to the first three numbers are 255 in our net mask. So it's going to be 255.255.255.0. So again, what this tells you is the first three numbers in our IP address are the network. So you're not connected to the 192.168 network. You're connected to the 192.168.118 network. And you are device number one on that network. That's what the zero means. The zero means that that is the number for your device on that network. So it can communicate with other devices that are on the 192.168.118 network. Okay, It's not on the 172.2.0 network, at least not this interface. But this is our minimum changes we have to make to this file. So let's hit our escape colon WQ. It's like, did my changes take effect yet? If I run my IPA, it's like, no, they didn't take effect yet. I got to restart the service. So let's do a sudo system CTL restart network. And when I hit enter to that, it'll pause for a minute, hopefully not give any errors and say, yes, okay, now we can go about uh, taking a look at our interfaces here. So this is the important thing to understand is that because this has two interfaces, my CentOS machine has two interfaces, it's actually connected to both networks at the same time. So this computer could send signals to the 172.2.0 network. It also could send signals to the 192.168.118 network. And of course, that's the whole point of a router, right? If we jump back over to the picture, the whole point of the router was it's going to be able to communicate across both networks. Traffic could go one way through it. Traffic could go another way out. At least that's the whole goal once we actually get the router configured. We haven't got the router fully configured yet. Just because the IP addresses are there does not mean the router is ready to go. There, there will be other things that we'll have to do in kind of in a future lesson to be able to cover that. But this is how we can at least bring the IP address online for this particular machine.